right, uh, back at McEwen Pavilion here in Moraga, California. Final score, St. Mary's 75 and BYU 62. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Barbasol, the brand America trusts for a close, comfortable shave. Now with razors, premium, disposable razors. You're looking good, Cougars. You're shaving with Barbasol. St. Mary's defeats BYU for a fifth consecutive time. This one 75-62 at a sold-out McEwen. 3,500 fans on hand to see the Gales shoot 54% to BYU's 43%. And uh, there wasn't a half of play or an overtime session in which BYU outshot St. Mary's this regular season. Five periods of play, and the Gales outshot BYU in every single one of them. And that was the decisive factor on this night, as it was December 30th at the Marriott Center. Gales shoot 54, BYU shoots 43. Gales shoot 43 from the arc, BYU 41. Gales shoot 89% of the free throw line, BYU 82. So outshot from the field, the arc, and the strike. Out-rebounded by six, as they were in Provo are the Cougars as the Gales go 32 to BYU's 26. BYU 14 assists, 10 turnovers. The Gales 18 assists, 12 turnovers. So the Gales actually turned it over 27 times in two games. And that's more like a four-game total for St. Mary's. But in the end, the Gales did enough other things well enough to go 2-0 against BYU on this season as the Gales win it by 13. Leading scorers, Jock Landale with 32, Emmett Nahr 13, Tanner Krebs 9, Colin Neal 8, 5 for Hermanson and Ford, 3 for Fitzner. So Landale goes 31 and 32 in the two wins over BYU. You might, you might start and finish with Jock Landale to tell this year's story. BYU gets 15 from Haas, game a team high, 15 for TJ, 14 for Yoli, 13 for Elijah Bryant, Hardnet 5, Celia 6, off the bench Cannon 5, and Dalton Nixon 4 gets you to 62 to the Gales, 75. Well, Terry, Terry Nashville along with uh, Greg Rubel here. Uh, Terry sitting in for Mark Durant tonight. Uh, there was a stage of the game, and it was, it was kind of the sequence we talked about. We might as well revisit it. It's a 56-51, to 51, under 8 to go. BYU out of the under 8 media timeout gets an OB under. And T.J. Haas, wide open in the right corner, good look at three. It glances off the rim, no good. He makes that as a two-point game, and it feels different. Instead, they go down the other end, and with the shot clock about to go off, Jock Landale makes his first three-pointer of the season. Instead of a two-point game, it's an eight-point game, 59-51, and the Gales kind of steadily pulled away from there ultimately taking a 13-point lead before winning it by 13, 75-62. It was a great out-of-bounds play. TJ likes coming to his right and shooting. That's exactly what they got in the corner. Him coming to his right, jumped up there, thought it was down, and uh, just missed it. And then on the other end, what uh, preceded the the three-pointer by Jock, balls in our hands, we can't quite grab it, goes out of bounds, short shot clock, NAR comes off that ball screen. The whole team goes with him, rightfully so, late in the clock. He flips it out to uh, to Jock, and Jock buries it. St. Mary's seems to make the right play on every single possession. Uh, give Coach Bennett credit for that, and uh, they executed here tonight. Second half came off ball screens. First half threw it into Jock. BYU adjusted in the first half. St. Mary's adjusted at the halftime. Time for our New Skin Data Discovery, brought to you by New Skin. Discover the best you. Terry, once you've uh, taken a look at the numbers, taken a look at the box score, seen what went down, what would you discuss, uh, maybe say is, is maybe the, the, the key data discovery point tonight for how St. Mary's got this one done? I think, again, anytime you play St. Mary's and you shoot 11 free throws, it's hard to beat them. BYU's great at the line, great at getting to the line, and St. Mary's continues to guard without fouling and uh, keeping BYU off the line again tonight. All right, there it is, your post-game recap. Gales 75 and BYU 62. So five straight losses for the Cougars against the Gales. Maybe they'll get one more look at them in Las Vegas when it matters most, and that is the hope now because uh, at this point, midway point of the conference campaign, you're 6-3 and three in league. The Gales are 9-0. and oh. The chances the Gales give three games back in the back half of league, seeing as they've already beaten BYU twice and won in Spokane, unlikely at best. Again, strange things have happened, but you're down three with nine to play, and the Gales have just won their 15th straight game. So the Gales looking good, sitting in the driver's seat for at least to contending for the conference crown of the final weekend with Gonzaga if the, if the Zags can hang. BYU's three games back and a tough road to hoe.
Seems like strange thing happened in a lot of leagues. Not the West Coast Conference, <laughs> not the Big 12. You know what you're getting. And uh, with three losses, it's tough to come back, especially with a team undefeated, like you mentioned, uh, in this conference and winning in, in Provo and already in Spokane. Uh, St. Mary's yeah. is, is tremendous this year. So they're 3-0 and against Gonzaga and only have the Zags left here in Moraga to go. So St. Mary's uh, looking like the preseason favorite. Credit to the coaches, looking like the preseason favorite they were picked to be. I was a little dubious about that because the, the Zags got no votes other than the one they had to get from Randy Bennett. And uh, then the Zags, kind of the way they began the year, looked to be kind of a juggernaut again. And St. Mary's lost a couple early. But right now, uh, the Gales firmly in the driver's seat in the West Coast Conference. They beat BYU by 13 tonight. So the Cougars stay solo third. And that's kind of where the Cougars' lot has lain for a number of years. They are solo third, but three games back of St. Mary's, uh, two games back now of Gonzaga as we hit the midpoint of conference play. So the hope is... Again, you got to keep winning games, but you want to get to Las Vegas, hopefully playing your best basketball, peaking, and then try and beat those top two teams when it matters most at the end of the year. But still, two games against Gonzaga still to go, so a chance to make up ground on both the Zags and the Gales. We'll see what happens. I'll give you a strange thing. In the West Coast Conference, we're at the midway point, and we haven't played one of the teams in the conference. And uh, two huge games with Gonzaga still remaining uh, for BYU. Obviously, if they can just one game at a time win the rest of their games going into that tournament, it'll be interesting to see what happens. BYU, oh, sorry, Terry. St. Mary's is getting a lot of national respect, which they should. It'll be interesting to see where they end up. And uh, these losses won't look as bad at the end if they continue to win like they are. Find a way to beat Gonzaga both times, and uh, great things can happen. So the Cougs will have played St. Mary's twice and LMU twice before they play Gonzaga once. And that'll come a week from Saturday up in Spokane. And again, those two games against, against Gonzaga uh, could mean a lot to BYU's uh, late season ascent up the conference standings. Again, there's a chance to surpass uh, the Gales or the Zags, if not the Gales, toward the end of the season. We will see what shakes out as we head down the stretch. But BYU tonight falls by 13. 75-62. Postgame coverage will continue from here in Moraga on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The final buzzer has sounded. And today's BYU basketball game is complete. Selyus another three. Got it again! Zach Selyus! Time now for Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Exclusive post game coverage of BYU basketball is brought to you by Provo Land Title. In 1966, we started with a simple goal service. 50 years later, that goal is now a tradition. Now, let's join your host, Jason Shepard. BYU falls on the road at St. Mary's, 75-62, the final in Moraga. We'll get you back to McCune Pavilion for more postgame coming up in just a few minutes. Quickly, though, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. KBYU FM, HD2, Provo. You're listening to Cougar Sports on BYU Radio. In women's basketball tonight, BYU Cougars hosting St. Mary's at the Marriott Center. Congratulations to the Cougars. They defeat the Gales 63-54. to Cassie DeVagere leading all scorers with 22 points. Brenna Chase with 21. All right, top 25 action. Everything, obviously, at this point in the evening is a final. Number 15, Gonzaga winning at Portland, 95-79. to It was number three, Purdue, winning at home over number 25, Michigan, 92-88. to Arizona defeats Colorado, 80-71. to Penn State gets the buzzer beater, the three to defeat number 13, Ohio State. They win 82-79. to Wichita State defeats Central Florida, 81-62. And the University of Utah upsets number 21 Arizona State in overtime, 80 to 77. All right, other WCC action. Pepperdine picks up their first conference win. They are now one and eight. They win at home by a point over LMU, 71 to 70. San Francisco, bit of an upset here, 69 67 over the Pacific Tigers. The Tigers now five and four. They will be at the Marriott Center Saturday night to take on BYU. San Diego bounces back from their loss in Provo on Saturday. They win at home over Santa Clara, 66 to 58. Those are your scores 
in the WCC. BYU falls on the road at St. Mary's, 75-62. The Gales defeat the Cougars. We'll come back. We'll have scores from the NBA after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. St. Mary's defeats BYU 75-62. The Cougars now 6-3 and three in conference play. Welcome back to Cougar Post Game Live. Jason Shepard with you. We'll get you back to McCune Pavilion in just a second. Want to update you on a light schedule tonight in the NBA. Uh, one game just gone final in Golden State. It is the Warriors defeating the Minnesota Timberwolves 126-113. to Kevin Durant, 28 points, 10 rebounds, and 11 assists. A triple dub for KD. Also, the Kings winning in Miami, 89-88. Oklahoma City defeats the Washington Wizards in OKC, 121-112. to And the Denver Nuggets win at home, hosting the New York Knicks, 130-118. The final from the Pepsi Center. Our final tonight in Moraga, St. Mary's defeating the BYU Cougars 75-62. That is going to be a wrap for Cougar Post Game Live after the break. Back to Moraga for the Cougar Locker Room Show. Your final again, 75-62. BYU falls to the Gales, and you heard it all right here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Our exclusive post-game coverage continues with the Cougar Locker Room Show. We'll hand off TJ3, post fires. Oh! TJ High does it again! Brought to you by Mountain Point Medical Center. Our experienced team puts you and your heart health first. Now, let's head back to the Bryant Heating and Cooling Courtside Seats and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, then, welcome back courtside here to McEwen Pavilion in Moraga, California. Sold-out crowd on hand to watch the Gales win their 15th straight game, a program record tying 15th in a row and a fifth consecutive win over BYU. 75-62 is our final score. After shaking off the rust against San Diego on the weekend, Dalton Nixon played 14 minutes tonight against the Gales. Scored four points and joining us here courtside on the Cougar locker room show. Dalton, thanks for, uh, thanks for taking some time with us. And uh, maybe just personally give us a sense of how it feels having played two games back after missing 11. It feels good. Um, the foot is feeling a lot better. And it just feels good to be out there uh, on the court with the guys. And uh, tough loss tonight, but um, personally it feels good getting up and down, getting my win back. Were you really sure how the foot would respond after a couple of hard games? Did you have enough practice to get a sense that you'd be okay? I did. I had enough time uh, with practice and working it in um, little by little to the point where I felt confident to, to be out there playing. Dalt, let's talk about tonight a little bit. Uh, you were guarding Jock at times. Uh, talk about the game plan of you fronting and, and what the plan was there. Um, yeah, St. Mary's is really good uh, uh, feeding the ball to the post uh, and having split screens after that. And so um, the game plan was to try and, and front Jock and um, kind of just give them a little bit more pressure uh, offensively to to take them out of what they're comfortable doing. So the uh, the St. Mary's Gales have now uh, swept the season series with BYU, uh, win the games uh, in Provo and, and Moraga. Jock Landale, the common thread, 31 points first time, 32 points second time. Is there a right way to deal with Landale? Uh, he's a great player, and uh, St. Mary's is really good, and they, and they play through him. Um, but we hope to be able to, you know, make some adjustments and then see them hopefully in the conference tournament and, uh, and hold them to a few lesser points and get a win against them. Dalton Nixon with his courtside. More from Dalton next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Greg Rubel, Terry Nashif, courtside, visiting with Dalton Nixon on the Cougar Locker Room Show. Gales 75, BYU 62. We were at shoot-around today, uh, Dalton, and uh, Yoli Childs wasn't doing it. He was uh, he was sick, wasn't feeling well. Coming into the game tonight, not sure he could even go. Did go. Played 26 and really grounded out tonight. I think, I think you have to be pretty proud of the way Yoli played. Scored 14 tonight before fouling out late. Uh, he gave you all he could, I thought. I think so, too. Uh, he was bad on some sickness today, and um, it was good to just see him out, see him out on the court, and uh, the coaches just asked to, for him to give it, give it his all, and that's what he did tonight. 
Dalt, it's great to see you out there with these guys, like you mentioned, being out there and helping them. How hard was it to watch them battle and play uh, while you're rehabbing that foot? It's tough, man. A uh, month and a half of seeing them play in big games against Utah and St. Mary's at home. And so it just feels good to be able to, to be in the game plan now and be a part of this and, and be able to step out foot on the court. So three games back of the Gales now at the halfway point of league. It'll be tough to try and get back to where they are right now. But still, uh, nine, le nine league games left to go, including two big ones against the Zags. You'll see them for the first time I in a weekend. Uh, your thoughts on, on the back half of the league and what you guys can still get done? Definitely. I think uh, um, it's, uh, it's tough with this loss, but we're just focused on Pacific now on Saturday and just take it one game at a time, and we have a real opportunity to get better the back half of the season and go into the conference tournament where, it's, where it matters. And you get the second team to beat you this year as you get Pacific on Saturday, so you learned a lot about them at their place and want to get them back. Now you get them at the Marriott Center. Definitely. We're really looking forward to it on Saturday. Well, Dalton, nice to see you out there again, again, slowly but surely. Things are coming along, and uh, we hope you continue to feel better as we head down the stretch. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. All right, Dalton Nixon with us. We'll come back with Dave Rose here on the New Skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to get the final word on today's game from head coach Dave Rose. I'm really proud of our guys. I just think that, uh, you know, you go to the last 80 minutes that we've played and you've seen a lot of fight. It's the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show. BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. The Cougar Post Game Coaches Show is also brought to you by Mountain Point Medical Center. Our experienced team puts you and your heart health first. Now let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, so we're back courtside here at McEwen Pavilion in Moraga, California. Sold-out crowd on hand. Uh, really competitive, again, entertaining, and a grinding type of game as uh, the gr Gales win it by 13 tonight, 75-62. to 62. Head coach Dave Rose with us now courtside. Coach, uh, post-game thoughts on, uh, uh, on what went down tonight? Well, I, I thought it was a really uh, competitive game. Both teams playing really hard. I thought that, uh, you know, uh, both, well, I thought both teams had pretty good game plan, a lot of adjustments during the game. Uh, you know, it basically comes down to, you know, a few more plays, one end or the other. But St. Mary's is really good at what they do, and they just stay with it and stay with it. And, you know, we tried uh, three or four different guys, three or four different ways, and Jock ended up with basically the same night he had, at, you know, at our place. And uh, I just wish that uh, we'd make him – you know, make shots from 10, 12 feet instead of from three or four feet. And, and the issue is trying to figure out how to keep him from getting there. And, you know, sometimes it seems like you, you're playing the game exactly by the rules, and then he just buries you, and, and then the next thing you know, he's right at the front of the rim. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I think that uh, there's opportunities there where, you know, maybe you could slow him down if we'd get a call or two, you know, and it's just you just don't. And then – seems like on the other end that uh you know guys get a little bit confident in their ability to move the defender out of the way and and so uh then things don't work out for you on that end like you wanted to and it's frustrating it's, it's a frustrating thing I, we got to just keep our guys together and fighting hard and competing because you know th th this was a everything said play the game again make three or four more shots that are wide open that we're we're very capable of making you got to do it to beat this team. I mean, you, you can't let them off the hook when you get that opportunity. And that seems to be, uh, you know, what we're looking at because of the fact that defensively it's really hard to shut these guys down. It's, it's a way better offensive team than they've ever had. I mean, this is a really good offensive team. And and Anar and, and, Lock, and uh, Jock are two dudes that uh, just really get it and they play together. And, you know, it's not very often that a big guy – Gets the ball in the post, throw it back out, gets it back again on you know three maybe four times in the same possession. The ball's thrown back to him because they know how they, how to win. They know who where their bread and, and, and butter is, and uh, it makes it tough on us. As good as Jock is, or if, if not automatic around the rim, ironically, it's one of his longest shots of the season, a 21-footer in the second half, his first and only three of the year that ends up being, you know, maybe maybe the key play of the game. The big, yeah, the big and we play just missed a wide open shot on that end. Yeah, and, off the OB. Know, yep. And they make it. So, but that's how you win. I mean, that's what that's what you know good teams do. And you know, I I think that uh, 
I feel, you know, I feel bad for our guys because they competed hard, played hard. You know, we executed the game plan in a lot of ways, but we just didn't come up with a win. So that's kind of discouraging. But the guys will get on, get home, and we'll uh, get ready for Saturday. Coach, a couple things about uh, some adjustments that you made. Got a lot of open shots by slipping those ball screens. Just talk about uh, the thoughts there, and uh, it really scored early in both halves uh, doing that. Yeah, well, they, they, they hedge really hard, which means they come out on that ball screen and get two on the ball. Anytime we get two on the ball, we want to get the ball out of that guy's hands, and then you get into rotation. And so uh, we're slipping this thing, and it's kind of a short roll, just so it's, it's an easy pass. Uh, and then, you know, then you have an advantage because the two behind you are guarding the one guy, and then you should have an ability to find somebody that's open. And, and we did that a lot. And we had little four-footers, had a couple layups, hit the corner a couple times for threes, and, uh, you know, had uh, opportunities to, to make them pay for putting two on the ball. Coach, we didn't talk about it in pregame at all because uh, we really didn't know what you'd see tonight from Yoli Childs. But, uh I'm sure you're pretty proud of the fact that he uh, put 26 minutes out there for you, scored 14 points, 6 of 10 from the field on a day where he wasn't feeling well, didn't shoot around, and uh, was kind of a question mark coming into tonight. Yeah, he did. He he uh, he competed. He It was a good 26 minutes. You know, you end up with five fouls, and a lot of that is trying to figure out how, you know, how to guard that guy down there. And, uh, you know, they came right out, right at him, and we were hanging on the, the three-point shooters, you know, because we, we, we thought that, uh, you know, that was – that would be the difference in the game if they hit, you know, 9, 10, 11 threes. That, that would be the, the key to them winning. And so we just wanted to do our best, you know, without bringing a second guy or a third guy. And he, he got rolling really early, and I think that gave him a lot of confidence. Second half we started Luke, and then they just, you know, blew blew the whistle and called yeah. six fouls in the first three minutes. So Literally. Yeah. Then they didn't call any more fouls for about 12 minutes. It, it, it was, was 13 minutes without a foul against you. Quite interesting. It was that. We'll take a break. Closing comments from Coach Rose next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. St. Mary's 75 and BYU 62, our final score here at McEwen Pavilion in Moraga, California. Greg Grubel, Terry Nash of courtside. Coach Dave Rose with us for a moment or two before they get out of here and uh, get back to Provo Pacific coming to town on Saturday night. So, Coach, uh, St. Mary's wins its 15th straight game tonight. That ties a, a program record. They're ranked in the top 20 for a reason. As you mentioned a moment ago, their best offensive team you think you've seen here since you've been in the league, probably. Yeah, I, I think that uh, you know they do such a good job of keeping you spread out, and then that allows them to you know get four on the perimeter, and then you got the, the one big fella inside, and they've always had a really good post guy uh, you know, since we've been playing them here in this league, and but this kid's the best. I mean, he's uh, he's as good as they've had. And uh, like I said, I, I, I just hope that, you know, we play him again, we get another shot at him, that we can figure out a way to actually make him make, you know, 10, 12-foot shots instead of getting those things right at the front of the rim. Coach, let's talk about the quick turnaround. Uh, what will you do with this game? Move on, go to Pacific. Uh, you got an opportunity to get this bad taste out of your mouth really quickly, but a challenging uh, quick turnaround. Yeah, we we, uh, we spent so much time, you know, in the last three or four days on St. Mary's. I think it's time to put St. Mary's, to, you know, aside. And uh, we played them twice in the first half of the league. And, uh, you know, that's you know, that's just uh, you know, kind of the luck of the draw as far as the uh, schedule is concerned. But uh, now we'll attack the second half of this league you know and go after it and uh and we got to got to play the zags twice in the second half so that'll be a real challenge for us but this game on saturday you know it was a real physical battle over there and uh, you know we didn't we didn't really uh respond as well as i thought we could to the physicality and i thought we fit, responded really well to the physicality in this game i thought we responded really well to the physicality of the san diego game last week and so uh, hopefully we'll do a better job against Pacific on Saturday. Interesting tonight, Coach, as a, as a coach. Uh, you, you probably don't know this, but LMU Pepperdine, uh, they foul up three, four seconds to go, and end up losing the game. Made the first, missed the second, kicked it out, and uh, shot the three. That's what all the coaches fear. You can't lose if you uh, don't foul. Uh, how, do you, how do you feel about that? What's your philosophy late? <laughs> well, I, I think we've... We've come to the point that, you know, inside of, uh, you know, five or six seconds we'll probably foul. But other than that, you know, we won't. But uh, it's it's nerve-wracking no matter, you know, well, what what you're doing because you, you're, you're almost convinced for sure the guy's going to make the three. Um, 
and uh, you don't want him to, so you try to foul him. Then you're worried about fouling the guy in the act of shooting. I mean, it's it's uh, it's probably way easier just to win by five or six, <laughs> not have to worry about it. Another data point that you don't want yeah. out there when yeah. you lose the game when you're up three. Oh my goodness, under I, four I, can't, I can't imagine how. Mike Fields, I mean, and, and, you know, the funny thing about it is he won a game last Thursday just as crazy the opposite tr- yeah. thing on San Francisco. So, you know, that's why these things are on TV, and that's why people watch because you don't really know what's going to happen. Well, you're at the Midway Point of the League, uh, Coach, and a lot of time and opportunity to make some moves here in the back half. All right, let's All right, do it. We'll see you back in town. All right, see you, All right uh, Coach Dave Rose getting ready for Pacific on Saturday night. We'll come back and wrap it up here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. We're back courtside here at McEwen Pavilion, Moraga, California. Sold out crowd, 3,500 on hand to watch the Gales beat BYU 75-62. 15 wins in a row for St. Mary's, five in a row over BYU. The Cougs fall to 6-3 and three in league, 17-5 and five overall. The Gales go to 9-0 and oh in league and reach the 20-win plateau. For Coach Randy Bennett, that's 11 consecutive 20-win seasons for St. Mary's. And so the WCC, one of those rare leagues, where three teams have 20-win streaks of 11, 12, 13, 17. Like, three teams have decade-long streaks of 20-plus wins. Remarkable consistency at the top of this league. And unlike the Mountain West Conference or or the WAC, uh, Terry, it's BYU put put in a league with a couple of traditional historical juggernauts that you're trying to knock off, whereas before, historically, you were one of the teams others were trying to bump off. It's It's been a tough go. And it's just so different. I remember that there was a formula in the West Coast Con- or the Mountain West that we would have where, you know, road wins count as a point, road losses are zero, home wins are zero, home losses are minus one, and you could figure out and calculate how it happened. And every road win meant so much, and the, it's so different in this league. Every game, you just have to win every game. If you want to win the league, you have to win every game. And uh, that's what St. Mary's does. That's what Gonzaga uh, just about did last year, and it's just so different um in this league and then you talk about uh the other teams those bottom half and the schedules that they play um leading into conference play and uh, they're on the road they're taking bad games and it affects their rpi it affects these things in the mountain west so many teams were buying games and they had a good rpi by them because of the way that they had an advantageous schedule and there's so many teams that don't have that here other than the top three so tonight's uh, uh, tonight's results show san diego defeating Santa Clara by a score of 66-58 at Jenny Craig. San Francisco defeating Pacific on the Hilltop 69-67 with that crazy finish. Pepperdine getting its first league win 71-70 over LMU. Both teams now 1-8. We'll get to standings in a second. And uh, Gonzaga uh, with uh, no trouble defeating Portland 95-79 up at the Child Center. And BYU falls by 13 here tonight. So after tonight's play, we're at the halfway mark of league play, and here's the way it looks. Gonzaga is a second to St. Mary's. The Gales 9-0, and all alone atop the West Coast Conference, 9-0, and followed by Gonzaga 8-1. and So a one-game gap between the Gales and the Zags, the difference being St. Mary's win over Gonzaga in Spokane. Then a two-game gap back to BYU. Solo third of the Cougars at 6-3. and Tie for fourth, Pacific 5-4, five and four, San Diego 5-4. and four. Tie for sixth, Santa Clara 4-5, and five, San Francisco 4-5. and five. Portland solo eighth at 2-7, and seven, and a tie for ninth, LMU and Pepperdine both at 1-8. and eight. Next up for BYU, Pacific on Saturday as the Cougars look to put a two-game gap between themselves and the Tigers and retain that solo third position. It'll be a 7 o'clock or make it a 6 o'clock Mountain Time pregame and a 7 o'clock tip for BYU and Pacific at the Marriott Center on Saturday night. All right, that's going to do it for tonight. Our thanks to all those who made our broadcast possible this evening and into the early morning back east where our board, our control board operator, Carter Malloy, was working tonight. Our thanks to Carter, our network manager, Mike Tingle, our coordinating producer, Dave Shook, our BYU broadcasting control board operator, I think it was Tanner Wilkinson tonight, either Tanner Wilkinson or Cole Wissinger, either Tanner or Cole back at BYUB, our studio host, Jason Shepard. Appreciation to all those folks. Kyle Chilton is our courtside statistician tonight. 
to thank Kyle for his help, along with Alex Bay of uh, St. Mary's for helping us with uh, pregame interviews, along with uh, Coach Marty Clark of St. Mary's. My color commentary colleague, Terry Nashif, tonight. My name is Greg Grubel. We thank Cougar Nation for tuning in wherever you were or are this evening. And, uh, Terry, I'm sorry you took your first loss of the season here tonight. Greg, it was tough. Um, I'm excited to listen to you and Mark uh, on Saturday, and then I'll see you in Southern California a week from tonight. Yeah, we get you at LMU a week from tonight. Part of that LMU-Gonzaga back-to-back road weekend as the Cougars do get the Zags twice in the back half of the league. So halfway mark, 6-3, and three, and overall 17-5 and five for the Cougars. Back with you Saturday against Pacific. That's going to do it for tonight. So once again, Greg Grubel, thanking you for tuning in, saying in the meantime and in between time, this has been BYU Men's Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Good night and so long from Moraga, California.